Hey guys, welcome to the Rat Grind channel. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today is episode 44 and June 5th. So we're going to be talking about um, the crypto markets back in the green and some um, industry news as well as some Bitcoin and Ethereum analysis, right? So just some friendly reminders. If this is your first time on this channel, please, please do subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell. I know that doesn't do much with YouTube anymore, but just, you know, please keep checking back into the channel. I produce videos every single day, give you updates on the market, give you updates on, um, you know, the top coins, um, as well as, you know, please, if you like the video, if it provides you the value that you're looking for, please smash those likes. So thumbs up, please hit them. Um, and I look forward to getting your comments. I really, really appreciate them um, any creative criticism that you have so that I can continually improve this channel and give you the maximum impact and maximum value so some of the stuff that we're gonna talk about today um, the crypto markets are showing signs of recovery, right? Um, it took a pullback in the last couple of days, but then it went on back into the green again today. So we're going to talk about that. Um, Bitcoin and Ethereum are still not out of the woods. There's still some major resistances that are keeping it down, but it ended on a green candle yesterday, um, which is just a couple hours ago. Um, and that's really really great news although it's opened again on a red candle so we'll look at the charts and we'll look at the overall crypto market so so for some for some practical coin news ledger the company behind the nano um, which a lot of us have right if you don't have Trezor, normally you have a ledger nano to store your cryptos they're going after exodus right so we're going to talk about that news and u.s universities are getting into crypto investment so that's really really good news um and binance starting to um has invested in an esport uh venture right and they're they've also listed nexus or nxs into the into their exchange so that's really really good news congratulations to the people that were able to get into nexus and were are holding that coins um and the last bit of news that i want to be able to share with you guys is china is digitizing you know they've implemented a blockchain to digitize their paper checks all right so that, those are the news that we're covered today so let's get right into the market guys So as you can see behind me, a lot of the coins are back in the green. You know, Bitcoin is up 2.29%, Ethereum 3.8%, Ripple XRP 2.82%, and EOS again is 6.8%. And the main launch is, I mean, the mainnet is launching. And a lot of the coins are pretty much in the red, the major, I mean, green, The may, as far as the major coins are concerned, right? So that's what, that's really, really great news. Let's look at crypto, um, the crypto market on coin market cap. So today's coin market, uh, I mean, the market cap for all, all of the coins today is 343 billion dollars so that's really really great um the uh 24 hour volume 15 15 billion right um so it's still you know it hasn't um given us the maximum value that we want to be able to get out of the market as i mean as far as the volume is concerned and the market cap is still way below you know closer to half a trillion dollars but still you know it maintaining a 343 as you can see the charge pretty much everything is in the green guys cardano um 4.11 percent uh bitcoin cash 5.13 percent as you can see um it's again uh holding up you know there's a slight um not major pullback but it sort of uh is consolidating above this line <clears throat> and hopefully by tomorrow it continues an uptrend so we're going to see that um it's midweek it's wednesday here in the u.s so we're going to see how that pans out let's just scroll down here wow bitcoin uh binance coin 9.97 percent ontology pumped today 11 percent we've been um we played that coin quite a bit um in you know trading that coin there's a lot of opportunities there um the only the only red that i see is bitcoin private pretty much majority of the coins Oh, Digix Dow, Huobi Token, and Loopring had um, 11%. So Digix Dow and Huobi are the only ones that are red here. Cyber Miles. Yeah, so pretty much overall, um, nothing eventful here. 
Oh, next is, is 14%. That's that's most likely because of the listing on Binance. So that is, you know, it gave it that opportunity to pump 14% because, of course, there's more liquidity into the market because of the, you know, because people are able to trade on Binance, right? So let's look at the chart, guys. So as we can see, you know, we've been looking at this um, Bitcoin to dollar pairing on uh, Bitfinex. We're looking at the one day chart and it, you know, it ended today or yesterday on a green um candle right we we drew this channel out i believe yet last night um and it bounced off perfectly on that channel so it's definitely form a good channel there but normally speaking guys this is um you know it's usually what happens when it's on a on a pull down like this when it's on a pullback well this is actually a a bear market not just a pullback right um and then you form an ascending channel like this and normally speaking it's consolidating down here it might go down and hit this channel right if it hit this channel so long as it does not break down break through this channel i mean this um <clears throat> the symmetrical triangle here then potentially we could bounce and hit this channel right here. What we'd like to see, we don't want to see like this rapid rise, just like this one, right? So it went from, this was back in February 5th, right? It went all the way down to about 6,000, maybe under 6,000. And by the 20th, within, you know, a couple of days, basically a couple of weeks, it was all the way up to 11,000. That's something that we don't want to see. So we want to see a healthy flow here. We want to see sort of like this one right here. Um, it took a couple of days, maybe, you know, a couple of weeks for it to really get to hit this particular channel and we want it to break out. So if, if it hits around this about, you know, 9,000, 9,500 level, um, it even, you know, like this 9,000, 9,500 level, then that would be a steady breakout right and that could continue a a bullish momentum and continue the, the ascending trend line that we've had overall you know in the last couple of years if we look at all the way back to um let's say the month chart right so if we look at the month chart you know it's always going up you know it's in the overall grand scheme of things this is just a blip it's not even as bad as what happened here right back in two, you know this is the mount gox time when that whole market just crashed and it did a <laughs> a long term consolidation almost like a winter right like you know if you watch game of thrones winter had come at that time so it's not quite there but like i said we are not out of the woods just yet you know if we can still pull back down and we could go all the way down to you know 6000 if this does not hold right it can even go drop all the way down uh, but it's a healthy pullback overall in the overall grand scheme of things. I know some of you guys, when you got in, you probably are holding on some, some Bitcoin bags. Um, but just rest assured that it is um, from what we see overall, it's going to recover, right? So let's look at the let's look at the MACD. So as you can see, it did a crossover. This is a bullish um, uh, crossover right here. Um, and it's ascending up, right? So that's something that we want to continue to see. The RSIs are not, you know, it was oversold down here. That was, I believe, you know, towards the end of May, right? That's when it was oversold and now it's trajecting up. It, you know, did a slight pullback that was, you know, the last couple of days and then it's trajecting up again. So if, even if it does a minor pullback, as long as we look like this, this is what we're looking for, guys. When we look at this, bullish divergence like that that's what we're that's what we want to be able to see and normally speaking when we see that happening let's let me just exit here oops my bad so when we see that happening and it's on a on a red line i mean a uh, bearish candle it means the selling momentum is going down so that's you know pretty much what we want to be able to see and if you look at the i added the stochastics here as well as you can see um it's it's a di it's diverging uh bullish right so we want to keep that momentum get it up 
to this particular channel on the oversold channels and it can maintain that and that would give it an opportunity to hit this so we want this to slow down a little bit and you know see this in the next couple days maybe all the way to to the 13th which you know i've been telling you guys is an important date for crypto because we're we most likely um will get some regulatory clarity from the securities exchange commission here in the united states so we're gonna see how that all pans out so let's look at ethereum guys um in the future i'm gonna look at other coins but because this is you know i do day trading and majority of my pairs um other than the long-term investments that i have i use either ethereum or bitcoin to trade so that's why i look at these particular coins once i get the the community to to join me maybe do some live videos then i'm going to do more of a you know technical analysis fundamental analysis on the other coins but i just want to do these because to me these are the major ones that i'm holding that's why i'm i'm sharing them with you so for the one day chart <clears throat> the ethereum um ethereum pair for dollar on bitfinex is looking you know relatively good right um we've gotten support basically the the 200 day exponential moving average a 200 day ema is currently supporting the 55 so that's really good so what we want to be able to see is um the 21 the 13 and the 8 ema wanted to go above this and cross this line so it will go above the white which is the 200 day the yellow which is the 55 and then you'll have the 21 13 and 8 and the market trading above that that means that we have a maximum level of support all these um <clears throat> all these signs that point to it point to it having a bearish momentum so that's that's what we want to be able to see within the market itself if we look at the MACD again, that is also a bullish um, divergence there. I mean, convergence there, and it's currently moving up. And the bigger this fanning hap fanning goes, it means that there's a lot of buying momentum that's happening in the market because when it's trading close, relatively close around here, if you can see, oops, see if you can see this area right here. Hope you guys can see this right. If you can see it didn't break out as much and then we went ahead and took a dip right when we want it to have what we want to have is we want to have something like this where yes it pans out it may retrace just a little bit goes up again retraces goes back again that's sort of what we want to be able to see but it looks like that didn't happen um over the the earlier this month even yesterday so this is just this is basically today right from the fifth this was the 6th um, of May all the way to, you know, this is about a month that it, that had happened. And, you know, it didn't really go down on this area right here like it did last time. It means that the selling pressure is sort of easing out and we want it to continue a massive um, increase there. So we're going to see how that pans out. Let's look at the RSI level. So the RSI levels, it's, it hasn't touched a 50 yet. So um, it's retraced just a little bit and it is, it's gone up again. So that's what we want to be able to see, just like what we saw. So as you can see, like I'll give you guys an example. So when we see right here, just this, this is forming a lower high <clears throat> and then a lower low, similar to down here that's usually a sign that it's going to continue to drop right but when we whenever we see stuff like this where as you can see the tip of this is is looking up it means the selling pressure is eased and there's more buying momentum that's going up into the market that took you took it here it almost did a triple top but it did a double top you know and that's sort of what we want to be able to see and then as you can see right here when it was oversold that's a downward downward momentum although it pushed back up but overall you know it just shows us that that's just that was just maybe some people just buying into it but overall it's it went down right so that's what what we don't want to what we don't want to see um so if we look at the if we look at the let's look at the four hour chart just so that we can get a little bit more of an idea of what happened today um as you can see you know it it held up relatively well Right, we have um, we have these green candles um, being supported by the 
the 8 candle EMA, 13 candle, 21 candle, 55 candle. The 200 is still up here, so that's still a momentum, um, you know, like a, a resistance that we need to be able to break. But that is something that we're looking forward to being able to do. All right. So that's pretty much it on the chart. Uh, we're going to keep checking back on this in the next couple of days. I'm going to look at it, what happens tomorrow. I'm going to try to see if I can maybe do a video early, really early in the morning. I'm going to try to see maybe next week. I'm going to replan my day um, because a lot happens when I go to sleep. And when I wake up in the morning, Asia market has already happened. And then we're, you know, a lot of you guys are here in the U.S. And the market has shifted a little bit whenever the Asians, you know, like South Korea, um, get into it and start buying up these coins, especially, you know, the major coins like, you know, Bitcoin and Ethereum and all that stuff, right? So let's get into the news, guys. So the first bit of news that I want to be able to share with you guys, this was on Daily Hoddle. Um, Ledger is launching long-awaited desktop apps with iOS and Android being supported next right so let me quote a little bit about this article that says the first release from the hardware wallet company will be available on windows mac os and linux starting july 9th so that's less than oh a little bit a little bit over a month away today is july 5th <coughs> excuse me let me just get a sip of water here so that is that is a little bit over a month away um, Lot Ledger says that the initial release is designed to bring all the current set of features supported by all our different apps, but in a unified and multi-currency unique application. You know, until now, Ledger users have had rely, you know, had to rely on separate Chrome applications to manage their coins. Right? You, you would you would sign into it, maybe with um, you know, you get into my crypto um also or you know like for ethereum you would do the same thing you know you would access it using a third party so now this is going to be really good they sh they have a screenshot here of what it's going to look like um and it's going to be you know sort of like exodus right i mean exodus does a lot of um holds a lot of coins this one in particular they're going to be supporting 28 cryptocurrencies right and then, you know, of course, they're going to support multi-devices, Ledger Nano, Ledger Blue, and all that stuff. And, you know, you would be able to send, receive account balances and histories and all that good stuff. So, you know, that's really, really good for us in the market. The more applications we're able to use, the easier it is for us to be able to, you know, to manage our cryptos. Although security is always a concern because whenever you put something in your computer, there's, there's a chance it can get hacked and... All that stuff but i think that's something that as an industry we need to be able to get over because you know we can't take a rocket scientist you know somebody that's technical all that stuff to be able to bank i mean to use cryptocurrencies like if if i, I if i ask my son here's my credit card when we're when we're in the restaurant right here's my card go pay for the bill easy right but if if i had to tell them okay you know pull out of your wallet ask them for their for their qr code or for their wallet send this make sure the address is correct because you might accidentally send it. that's very cumbersome so that's something that hopefully we as an industry we as a space can be able to make it make our crypto processing and transactions a little bit more kid friendly right once we can do that that's going to be good um, the other bit of news today as well that I want to be able to share with you guys is here in the U.S., universities are starting to invest in cryptocurrency hedge funds, right? I mean, there's a lot of, um, of course, the financial institutions are already getting into this, but there's still a lot of institutional money that is not being put in because they need a little bit more regulatory clarity, right? Because, you know, it all depends if... The, if the cryptocurrencies are considered um, commodities, the taxing would be completely different than if they are a security, right? So, but it, it's all going to depend on the different the, on the coins, in my opinion, right? I think a different set of rules, different set of laws need to be applied to different cryptocurrencies depending on what they are. Because <clears throat> if we say all cryptocurrencies are commodities, then you'll have a lot of these companies that are, you know, basically doing an IPO using cryptocurrencies that, you know, you'll earn a little bit of the company. So when you earn a little bit of the company, 
or get some dividends and stuff like that, just like a stock, then it's considered security. And so they will hide with, you know, hide behind that veil. So that's something that we don't want to be able to see. But this is a really great, really great news. Um, of course, the spokesperson, um, they spoke to Business Insider. This was where the original article came from. Um, John Lohr basically said that I can't say the names of the academic institutions because, of course, that's client attorney privilege, right? Um, but we have mostly on the East Coast that have begun doing investments in this space on a fairly modest basis, right? So that's that's really, really good. Um we want to be able to see more of this, more adoption. And there was a there was some news that Ripple Foundation they donated about fifty million to universities to, to help um, develop their own you know like courses on blockchain and stuff like that. So Ripple is really doing us. I mean, I, I know a lot of us are really um, you know we're not so happy about ripple because it's the bank cryptocurrencies right it's the is the centralized bank uh cryptocurrencies but they are doing their part they're making it more accessible they're really really pushing the name out there and the narrative bitcoin is not covered by any company so there's not really a single <coughs> company or you know group of people that are really marketing it although bitcoin already of course it it already has the brand reach, but it doesn't have a single, you know, face. Basically, it's all of us that are invested in it, that are trying to push its usability, its case study, and you know, it's real, it's its future, right? But Ripple is, you know, they have a whole company behind them. They have a concrete marketing plan, and they're pushing forward, you know, on it. I think that's something that a decentralized organization. Um, sort of has not figured out yet because there's too much democracy that happens and so some things have a lot more in a sense red tape right it has to go through a lot of people for something to happen there was a lot of disagreements but when you're in a company you know like an apple an amazon you have a head of a company you have a board that says this is what we want to do and then they'll just go do it, right? Based on statistics and stuff like that. But of course, that's not the decentralized model that we want to be able to to grow into. But you know, that says a lot about you know some of these people that are learning, uh, going to college. You know, the Gen Z that is coming into colleges, universities to have the opportunity to learn more about cryptocurrencies and blockchain, so that they can pursue newer ideas, right? and be able to further it along and you know we don't know um the next bitcoin is around the corner that's gonna completely revolutionize you know how web was revolutionized by web, web 1.0 was revolutionized by web 2.0 you know we could have web 5.0 or blockchain 2.0 coming just around the corner right so the next bit of news that I want to talk to you guys about is, of course, Binance, the world's largest crypto exchange, invests in a blockchain-based esports platform, right? So Binance CEO um, Changping Zhao, better known in the crypto community as CZ, um, commented that Chill Z, <coughs> I'm not sure if it's Chill Z or Chili's, Chili Z, maybe that's Chili Z, is a creative way to embrace blockchain technology that aims to promote mainstream adoption, right? CZ also replied to Chile's CEO, Alexander Dreyfus, tweet announcing the investment saying somewhat cryptically, thanks for helping Binance so much. This is the least that we could do, right? So that's really, really good because um, they did a private placement and they've raised about $27 million, right? So that's really, really good for this project. Hopefully it does do what, you know, CZ says that it can potentially do. And we're going to see how that all affects the market overall. We always want, you know, projects that make it easier to take the crypto space forward right that's that's what we're looking for so the next bit of news about binance that i want to share with you guys was nxs like i told you guys it pumped today 
because it's already list, listed on NXS. If you don't have this um, app on your phone, Crypto Tracker Bot, it basically tells you whenever you know new cryptos are listed on exchanges. So that's a really really good software for you to be able to to know. But I found this out on on Binance's uh, subreddit, so that's really good. So congratulations to you guys that do hold this particular coin, right? So the last bit of news that I want to be able to share with you guys is the Chinese central bank develops blockchain systems to digitize <coughs> paper checks so this is about this is just was announced about an hour ago right the chinese government reading on this is known for a skeptical stance towards cryptocurrencies having you know banned trading and investing in icos um around september of last year however china authorities have enthusiastically adopted blockchain technology right last year china filed more blockchain technology patents with the world um, intellectual property organization or wipo than any other country Right. And we heard I think I reported it last couple um, back in May, a couple weeks ago, when President Xi Jinping um, spoke to support blockchain as a technical technological revolution. Right. So that is something that, you know, although the bank, the banks are not keen on cryptocurrencies in general, but blockchain is definitely something that we can all agree um, whether you're on the on the side of the fence that says cryptos are rat poison, you know. Um, basically the uh, um, Warren Buffett's of the world, or you're in on the other side that's saying that, oh, Bitcoin is the future, is going to be the currency of the world, it's digital gold, digital gold like Jack Dorsey and um, Steve Wozniak is saying from Apple, then we can all agree that blockchain is the technology that will take the web to its next iteration, right? Um, so this is really, really great news. So we want to be able to see more of this news coming out but i you know what i'm seeing is the markets is relatively quiet you know from it's like a quiet before the storm sort of um <clears throat> hopefully that storm is a good storm instead of a bad storm but sort of i'm not seeing a lot of things happening um consolidation is happening and a lot of media is sort of pulling back and not really releasing a lot of um fomo information or fud news right there's not really much um, all I can see all over the world, I mean, all over the web is technical analysis, um, news of listings and stuff like this. So there's not really much that's being reported that's major, major that's happening. So hopefully, uh, maybe everybody's waiting for the clarification on June 13th on what the Security Exchange Commission here in the U.S. is going to say about cryptocurrencies, right? So that's pretty much today. That's pretty much it. So um, we're going to keep an eye on the market and report it to you guys as things happen all right well again thank you so much for your time today please do subscribe hit the notification bell and smash the likes smash the thumbs up please and as well as comment and give me your feedback below all right let me know how i'm doing let me know how i can imp continually improve this channel so that i can give you and provide you guys the maximum maximum impact all right well again thank you so much for your time today i wish you and your family a success filled day good night guys Love you. Bye.